We talked extensively about design systems uh, and uh, we even created one from scratch. And in this video, I want to share with you an example of greatness. And uh, this is going to be the analysis of uh, a design system from a very large corporate, uh, which is uh, Shopify. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dissect the ins and outs of this design system and see how you can apply the same principles in your projects. So we're going to leverage this uh, great uh, website, uh, which is design systems for figma.com. And uh, you can see that over here you have uh, an amazing uh, repository and database uh, of uh, design systems from uh, Fortune 500 companies and uh, very large companies overall. So if you simply go all the way down and uh, you find uh, Shopify, which uh, I skipped, it's this one right here. They use uh, what they call internally the Polaris design system. You can simply click on uh, Figma kit and uh, you're going to see all of uh, their design systems and uh, basically all of the Figma design files so that you can investigate and learn about uh, how they structured it. Now, don't be overwhelmed. There is uh, so many different design files. But we're going to focus on the core ones, which are going to be the components and the styles. Now, as I mentioned previously, when you're creating a design system for a small company, you're probably going to get away with uh, one single file or maybe two files. But uh, as you can see, the moment that you work on a large project that involves a lot of variables and years of work and collaboration through hundreds of different team members, the design files can become quite extensive. So it's really important to structure things well from the start. So why are we going to focus on just these two? Because the other ones are mainly branches that depend on the core components. So let's get started with the styles. So as you can see, and by the way, you can simply click on one of these and click on Open in Figma. And you're going to copy it, a duplicate of that file within your account. So let's get started with the first one which is the styles. Now, very similarly to what we did, uh, you can see that uh, the styles is uh, essentially a repository of the core building blocks of the brand. So we're going to find, uh, first of all, the release notes, uh, since uh, this is going to give you an update on uh, what was uh, the recent release. So you can see right here that uh, you can see everything that was updated uh, within each and every re release uh, was the author. And this is going to give uh, a clear idea on uh, the roadmap and what happened uh, previously and uh, afterwards. So this is a great thing to have, uh, especially if you're working in teams uh, on a larger scale. And uh, le going forward to what is really important is uh, the core building blocks which is uh, the colors. And as you can see over here, they have uh, two main uh, sections. First one being uh, is the tokens and then the color primitives. Now, a great thing that they did uh, is uh, they added uh, a brief uh, overview to some resources. And uh, over here, you can even uh, have some information uh, regarding uh, uh, what is uh, this section of the design system? And this can be useful in case stakeholders or developers uh, um, hop on uh, this file and uh, th maybe they want some more context on some elements. Uh, so this is a nice hub, uh, definitely not a must, uh, but uh, something to keep in mind. And as you can see over here, you can find all of the colors for all sorts of different scenarios. So you can see that uh, for example, these are colors that are going to be applied only for backgrounds and uh, they have a very specific uh, set of colors to use in a very specific uh, um, moments in uh, the UI UX uh, uh, scenario. So for example, if there is a background surface success, uh, uh, this is going to be the color associated to that. 
if uh, there is a hover state, uh, this is going to be the one associated. Same for the active. And uh, as you can see, they mapped out uh, pretty much everything to a very high level of um, detail. So this uh, is uh, something that uh, I encourage you to take a moment and just uh, have a look at this design system since uh, it's uh, very extensive. There is a text color, your icon color, borders, uh, and uh, even speciality tokens or things which are which usually go outside the realm of uh, the regular usage. So <clears throat> that's that. And uh, if we have a look over here, you can see all of the uh, main colors. I would assume it's structured in a way which uh, is not uh, the usual uh, design system in this uh, regards. So it's, it's really interesting, even for me as a professional who's been doing this for 10 years, to see different perspectives and different takes uh, to what can be the structure of a design system. So as you can see, whenever you're creating one, uh, you have to see the Figma file most as a blank canvas and uh, the sky is the limit really. And uh, your imagination is uh, really what's going to bring you uh, the results that you want. Right here we have uh, shadows and elevation, they call it, I love that. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, different, uh, different shadows with uh, different elevations, which uh, goes all the way from zero to 600. We have uh, all sorts of different uh, component specific tokens, which uh, yeah, again, really, really interesting. And uh, over here, they have uh, the spacing uh, section. So you can essentially add uh, uh, very specific amounts of spacing by using one of these values uh, in a way which is, uh, which pretty much follows a golden ratio, I would assume in their calculations. And um, yeah, overall, really interesting, as well as uh, the typography, of course, which is a must. Now, I see over here we have font tokens. So these are all the tokens related to the fonts, um, text component variants, uh, plus tokens right here. And then here it's the most, um, the more, uh, I would say, common approach uh, to like a, a visual style of uh, showing uh, all the different headings, uh, all of the body text, uh, and uh, if uh, it's medium, if it's semi-bold, if it's underlined, how, do, how does that look? Uh, and I, I'm seeing over here that they're using body large, body medium, uh, body small, and body excess. So as I mentioned previously in one of the videos, when it comes uh, to the headings, of course, we're going to have, for the most part, uh, six headings to cover the H1 all the way to the H6. Uh, and then uh, for the body, which uh, are going to be used for all sorts of different scenarios, such as paragraph text, uh, you can actually create uh, different variations of that in order to really maximize the amount of scenarios that you can uh, cover with uh, that uh, specific use case. So really interesting, really like the layout as well. Everything is so clean and minimal in this design system, which is uh, really, really refreshing to see. And over here, I'm also noticing that they added the border radius uh, in uh, tokens within the design system. So even here, I would assume there's going to be specific use case scenarios as to when you're going to use border radius zero or 200 or 500. So that would be really cool to, to learn more about. But yeah, overall, uh, this is going to be quite a, quite a good pace uh, overall. And uh, I'm seeing also some local components. Now talking about components is uh, this uh, design system uh, um, file, which is Polaris styles. Uh, is uh, the base uh, again uh, with all the main building blocks color space uh, typography you know shadows those type of things uh, and then they have another design file which is polaris components and uh, this is where they added all of the components but all the components of course uh, are going to follow the initial rules uh, which are being dictated by the styles so you can see that this dynamic is uh, pretty much the same as we discussed previously. 
have release notes uh, as uh, we've seen um, before getting started guides so this is a this is a technical guide i would assume on how um, to basically integrate this if there's any things to keep in mind uh, uh, since uh, each and every design team uh, we're going to have uh, their own nuances in uh, the workflow and um, yeah overall uh, the variable how this does the, the variable uh, system work so these are all um, internal nodes uh, um, which might as well work uh, uh, so for stakeholders or developers who enter this design system and as you can see right here we have uh, we, we start uh, seeing all of the components, which uh, for the most part uh, should be self-explanatory, but I really like the attention to details because they have uh, the component name at the very top. They have uh, a description as to where it's, it's, uh, this component is going to be used. And uh, also it can be a, there is a call to action to view it on the style guide. And here are the main components with uh, a small uh, um, description as to which one uh, is for which different scenarios. So for example, these ones are for large screens. Uh, these ones are for small screens. Uh, and uh, overall, uh, yeah, really, really interesting. Uh, here you have all the avatars. As you can see, they are um, basically uh, connected uh, with uh, these uh, variants uh, so as you can see you can create uh, a variant directly from here but this is going to be the core structure and uh, you have uh, all of the other components really so really really interesting uh, i would encourage you to take time uh, to browse through the different components uh, click on them see how they're using auto layout, see how they're using uh, com components and uh, instances and uh, how everything is related together because this is such a great exercise uh, uh, whenever you're starting out uh, or even uh, when you have, like me, a decade of experience, there's still so much to learn uh, each and every day and uh, seeing uh, how the big guys are doing it, uh, it's uh, such a such a great thing and you can do this for free with uh, examining exactly the the design system file so this is um, a great uh, great exercise which is going to enable you to learn uh, tons from it so that you don't uh, need to wait uh, to be hired at a big company in order to access these files you can do this uh, right now and bring your design skills to the next level so hope uh, this video was helpful and uh, we're going to make some more progress uh, with uh, the next one.